Greetings to all. We celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. We begin our liturgy by calling to mind our sinfulness and asking the Father's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice came out of many possessed people and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in the city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, 
and they receive the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defamed your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, that the righteousness for the sake of unrighteousness, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me. But you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day you will realize that I am in the, my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. 
the Gospel of the Lord. There's the story of these two little boys, about six and these brothers, they were six and eight years old, but they were mischievous, always getting into trouble, and their parents tried everything, timeouts, lectures, taking away privileges, nothing worked. These little boys, they were always getting into trouble. Finally, the, the, the parents heard about this minister who really had a way of getting, to, getting children to behave by putting the fear of God into them. What he did, what he would do, he asked them where God is at, and he wants them to answer. He, they want, he wants them to know that God is everywhere. God is everywhere watching them. And that's the point, that's how he gets, his, he gets that point across to the children. So the parents gave it a try. They went, they went to drop the boys off to talk to this minister. And the one little boy, the younger boy sits in the waiting room while the older boy, eight years old, walks into the minister's office. And he's this huge man, well over six feet tall, over 200 pounds. And he looks at the little boy and he just, first thing he says to him, he looks at him and says, where is God? And the little boy just trembles. He trembles from that. He's, he's scared. But, and he asks again, where is God? Again, the little boy says nothing, but just shakes all the more. He asks one more time, a little boy, where is God? At that, the little boy jumps up from the chair he was sitting in, runs out the door, sees his little brother in the waiting room, and says to him, come here, we got to get out of here fast. God is missing, and they think we took him. But this story reminds me in our gospel today about, about how important it is, about keeping God's commandments and living a good Christian life, which the minister was trying to make the little boys realize. Because the first thing Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And then at the end of our gospel, whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And we show our guests our love for Jesus by keeping his commands. And what is his, great, his greatest command was to love God and to love our neighbor. Maybe the way it goes is the more we love others, the more we show our love for Christ. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting, amen. We bring our petitions to our Heavenly Father. Our response to the intercessions is Lord of glory, hear our prayer. For those called to ministry in the church throughout the world, may they help those entrusted to their care to grow in the awareness that Christ is present in them. May they see the hand of God in events in their lives and in the created world around them. We pray, Lord of glory, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, may they be advocates of the lowly, defenders of liberties, models of justice, and may those nations with plentiful resources open their borders freely, imitating the generous hospitality of God who shows no partiality. We pray, Lord of glory, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may we be blessed with a renewal of God's spirit in our hearts. May God stir up into a flame the gift of the spirit so that we may build up the body of Christ and bring forth God's reign in the world. We pray, Lord of glory, hear our prayer. For all mothers and for those who have shown us a mother's love, may we always remember the nurturing care they have shown us. May their hearts be filled with peace and may they always know how much we cherish them. We pray, Lord of glory, hear our prayer. 
For those suffering illness of body, mind, and spirit, may they take comfort in the Lord's compassionate love. We especially remember Patricia McCoy, Michelle Starr, Nam Pham, Kim Nelson, and Kathy Boyle. And for all who have died, may they find light, peace, and happiness in the presence of the risen, risen Christ. We especially remember all mothers who now share in the glory of God's heavenly kingdom. We pray, Lord of glory, hear our prayer. For all our needs held in the silence of our hearts, and for those written in the book of petitions in the Eucharistic chapel, we pray, Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, may our prayers increase our love for you and one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life to be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life in the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death. And in, in his rising, the life of all has arisen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be court heir to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the best hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant for peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord with you always. We offer a sign of peace to one another. Peace, peace to all. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy of you to be
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of the saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Here's your spirit. May Almighty God bless us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Happy Mother's Day to all moms out there. Real special day because moms are always special to us. I have a little story about moms. There's this little girl sitting on her mom's lap. And the little girl notices on her mom's head there's a couple of gray hairs. And the little girl asks her mom, Mommy, you see those gray hairs on your head? Why do you have those gray hairs? And the, the mother says to the little girl, well, you know, every time that you're a bad little girl, you don't listen to me or talk back. Every time you do something like that, I get a gray hair on my head. That's, that's, that's why I have the gray hairs. And the little girl looks at her mother and says, mommy, then why is all grandma's, grandma's hair all gray? <laughs> so, Anyway, Gracie's gonna, Gracie's gonna be four years old and Louie has just turned three years old. So, uh, happy birthday, Gracie, on May 10th or great. And love to all, happy, happy Mother's Day again. Take care.